Hey everyone, welcome to Wild Life Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today I'm gonna to tell you how anybody could take an award-winning wildlife image on the first day they ever touch a camera. Stay tuned right after this. Now this video's five minutes, you gotta watch the whole thing. It's not gonna be very long, it's a quick thoughts. It's kind of a follow-up to a video I did earlier on the skill and talent of a wildlife photographer, just kind of questioning, like, what is our real skill and talent? Got a lot of good feedback on that. A lot of people mentioned the talent in the field and the things that go involved with it, the knowledge of the camera, you know, all the technical stuff that goes with it. A lot of mention of field work and behavior. And I am a huge proponent. I don't think I clarified it enough in that video. I'm a huge proponent of those skills. I, I absolutely believe that those skills uh, can en en enhance your photography and also understanding the behavior of your subjects can really take your photography to the next level. Uh, also editing, big deal. I, I think there's a lot that goes into editing. Uh, the premise of that video was though that in action photography specifically, the editing and the study of behavior may not matter quite as much, especially in a more controlled environment. And, and my, my argument here is that the subject is more important in those situations than the photographer. Whatever that subject does, if it, if it grabs a fish, it rips a head off, if it, you know, fighting with another bird, that's what's important. That's what we're capturing. Now, might it take some skill to do it? Sure. It, yes, you got to learn how to track the bird and do all this other stuff. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the, the premise that I'm going to lay out for you. I am going to tell you that I have some sons that are in their 20s. I could take one of my 20-year-old sons who I, I don't think has ever touched a camera. And he is capable I'm not telling you he's going to do it, but he's capable of producing an award-winning image on the first day he ever touches a camera. All he has to do is put that camera into the auto setting. I could teach him basics of photography in an hour or two. I could have him sit next to me. But here's the thing. We're going to be in a blind. We're going to be in a photo blind designed for wildlife photography. And I'm using that term very loosely. For those of you who follow the channel or know me on Instagram, you know that it is one of my pet peeves. People that that call it wildlife photography with animals that are not really wild. But let's let's get back to that controlled environment. I'm sitting in a blind. We're gonna, and again, it is not about ethics. So no ethical discussions here, please, down in the comments. This is, but these things exist. We're gonna sit in a blind. We're gonna throw a carcass out there in an area where raptors have been habituated to come and feed. We're going to put a perch up there. And on the right day, if my son is there on his first day, if that animal does something really cool, spreads its wings, grabs something, has a neat pose, stretches a wing, and I've got a, a golden eagle or a goshawk, and I bring that photo back and I enter it into a local contest, I can win the first day. First day you ever touch the camera, I can win. Maybe I could even win a high level contest. I could win a, a, a famous national contest with a great image, with a great pose. And the camera was basically just set up into the, the most automatic of functions, just able to capture it. it. Could happen. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it could. And that was my argument with the first video. And here, here's a point I want to make. In no universe can you give me the best piano in the world with the best acoustics and put a, an audience out there. And in no world can I sit at that piano on my first day and, and perform an award-winning award winning concert or, or it just a piece. I, I, it's, not, it's not possible. It cannot happen. In no world can I get on stage and do a ballet and win an award for it. I, nobody wants to see that, first of all. It, it, nobody, trust me, nobody wants to see that. It can't happen. But in wildlife photography, especially in controlled environments where the subjects are cooperative and will land in front of you. First of all, is it really wildlife photography? You can let me know down in the comments about that one. I have, again, I have other videos that touch on this subject. You probably hear my bias coming through pretty strong. But it is possible that in that controlled environment, somebody with no experience is capable of producing an award-winning image. Not likely, but possible. And I gave you two scenarios that in no universe is it possible to happen. So when I when I started this video and told you, 
somebody on day one could produce an award-winning image. I just want to follow it up with this video and tell you it, it can happen. Think about what I said. It's, it's going to be hard to argue. You can go down there in the comments and argue with me. Going to be hard to do. That is not to say that talent doesn't matter. A lot of people in that first video mentioned, what about the field work? Uh, what about the study of behavior? I am a huge proponent of that. I honestly believe one of the biggest assets that people have in photography and one of the things that separates them away from all the others is patience and time in the field. Because in wildlife, those opportunities have to happen. Now, here's the thing. In those controlled environments, all of that gets accelerated. I don't need a thousand hours to get that magic shot. I can sit there for four hours because I know it's going to occur in front of me. True story. I'm going to post an image over here. By the way, not a great image. Uh, I'm not super proud of this image, but pretty neat experience. I've been doing hawk watches for seven years. I go up there at least 20 times a season, and I photograph raptors. It takes me, oh God, I can't even imagine how many hours a season to get 10 or 15 good images. So I get about, about one, one image per, per outing. There's some days I get nothing. And these raptors can be really far from the distance. But I can go up there. I could go up there every day. And I could, I could almost never get a golden eagle shot. Now, I got one this year. I was really happy. It was more about the experience than the shot. I, I kind of blew it out in the field. Uh, wasn't prepared for this. I was shooting songbirds and this thing popped up. Um, but, you know, it was a neat, neat experience. But I could go to a photo blind. And again, seven years. And golden eagles come through here. Not all the time, but they come through. But seven years to get one decent, and I'll be generous and call this a decent image, one decent image of a golden eagle. There are places I could go and pay money and sit in a blind and get a golden eagle shot better than that in the first hour. It, it, it is it, it is possible for that to happen. So yeah, if you are a, and I'm going to say this, true wildlife photographer, meaning you are doing this in the wild, um, then it becomes much, much more challenging. And it does require a tremendous amount of skill and talent a lot of that field work, not just technical work. But I'm going to get back to this, this wildlife thing. It is possible to make it happen on day one in a controlled environment. So feel free to argue with me down in the comments. Uh, just a quick follow-up video. I wanted to get these thoughts. Some, some of these quick thoughts are just, you know, kind of random videos that I like to throw out. I get these thoughts in my head. I like to put them out to the public. But what do you think of it? Am I, am I right on this? And if you never watched the video uh, on skill and talent of a wildlife photographer. It's a pretty good video. Go uh, head over there and give that a view and then come back and you can comment here as well. Hey, thanks for your support on the channel on this one. Real quick video today. Uh, down there at the subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Make sure you're ready for future videos. Uh, thanks for your support on the channel and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.